Hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. Hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. Oh, this? <laughs> My blue hairnet? Sorry, that was just left over from a job this week. One second. Oh, this? <laughs> this was just left over from a job this week. This was the hairnet week, I think. Okay, we're done with that. Get off me. Oh no, I'm stuck. Okay, we're good, we're good. Hey guys, how are you? This HVAC vlog is brought to you by New Calgon. Did you guys have a good week? We had some really interesting jobs this week, so I'm gonna tell you all about them. Starting with a multi-zone LG ductless split system that we installed at an oat milk factory hence the blue hair nets. We were there for a day and a half installing systems in both the women's and the men's change rooms. <laughs> so that was a really fun job. Installation jobs always take everything out of me. I'm always so tired and hurting and everything after an installation job. The other place we wore a hair net to was at a plastics factory. They make plastic milk jugs and uh, juice jugs and stuff like that. You know, like the four liter jugs? I guess the two liter jugs too, those plastic ones. Anyway, super cool job site. And we were there to clean and flush a heat exchanger with some chemicals. Another super interesting job we had this week was at a salmon hatchery where they've got a system that keeps the, the water at 10 degrees Celsius, which is a very strange temperature. They have what used to be like a pool heater there, but it was able to go down to that low temperature. So what we have there is a refrigerant leak. What we ended up doing there was isolating the condenser and the evaporator so they were both separate. We pressurized both sides with nitrogen and we were leaving it there for a few days. We were there on Thursday. So we're going to go back either on Monday or Tuesday next week and see if our pressures are different or if they're not. And the hope is, the fingers and toes are crossed, that the leak is in the condenser and not the evaporator. Anyway, I'll tell you all about that in a bit. We also took a look at a unit heater and had to find some parts for that, which was a little bit tricky. And we ended up sourcing them from this super chatty guy. He was telling us so much personal information about himself and he would not stop talking. Trevor and I actually eventually, Trevor took a phone call and we were like, okay, this is going to like slow him down. No, he just kept going and going and going until eventually, like I literally, I felt a little bit rude, but I literally took one step, one step towards the door, closer and closer and closer until we're like, bye. <laughs> We also went to our meat suppliers super quickly to check out an evaporator leak that they had. It was just leaking water. So we went to check that out. Before I take you on my HVAC adventures for this week, I've just finished editing this vlog. And you guys, I took way, way, way too many videos of the ductless split installation. So I'm going to cut it short. I'm going to keep the, the salmon hatchery for next week's vlog. And I'm only going to do the two hairnet jobs for this vlog. So buckle up, I hope you're ready. <laughs> the job starts with preparing and picking up all of our equipment. We've got one outdoor unit and two indoor units and a concrete pad and some other stuff. We're grabbing two of these condensate pumps, which are different to the ones we usually use and heading over to our job site. All packed up and ready to rock and roll. And because we're working inside of a factory, we have to wear our PPE, our visi vests, and our safety glasses. And they've given us these beautiful hairnets. So stylish. <laughs> you should bow like this. Oh, oh. <laughs> 
All right, we're getting all of our equipment out of the truck and into the building and onto the roof where we need to go. This outdoor unit we have to take onto the roof over all of this lovely stuff. So it's teamwork getting it across the roof. It's not heavy at all, it's just awkward. And then when the roofers were here, they left these uh, roof jacks open for us so we can get our line sets down into the building. And then we will uh, waterproof that when we're done. So we're just setting ourselves up for the day. We have a strategy when it comes to installing these ductless splits with our line sets, which I'll show you in just a second. We're just putting that in place. And so now we're carefully unrolling these line sets. We've got a quarter and a three eight here covered in insulation, that white stuff. And so what we usually do is we roll everything out together. And luckily here on the roof, we've got lots of space to work with. We roll that out together. We'll put it together with the drain line and also with the control cable. So it's just a little bundle of four. And then we zap strap those together. So we've got sort of one bundle of line set, I guess. You, so we use lots of zap straps strapping them all nicely down the way so that they don't come loose, they don't come apart. And we're gonna send this down through the roof jack all in one piece. Just snipping off the tails of those zap straps so it's nice and neat. And now we have one long line set, all ready to go saves us a bunch of time and energy and effort. So Trev's gone downstairs to receive this line set and Dad and I are just gonna carefully get it through that roof hatch. And we're very careful not to kink any of these pipes. So we gotta keep them nice and straight or if they're going through any curves or anything, they gotta be big loopy curves. We don't want any kinks in this pipe. So just basically shoving it down and Trevor's receiving it at the bottom. All right, Triv says it's touching the ground downstairs. So we're gonna go down and meet him. And this walk, I had to do this walk like, I don't know, 1700 times in one day. That's a bit excessive, but you get the point. There's lots of walking and climbing over and under these various pipes and stuff like that. No wonder I was so tired at the end of this job. And here's the roof hatch. All right, so here's our line set that's come through the roof jack at the top there. And this is for the women's uh, change room. So now we can start getting the indoor unit prepared and ready. So dad and I are gonna do just that. Starting with removing that mounting bracket and then taking some measurements so that we know exactly where to mount our unit and also to cut our hole. So we use a level to make sure that it's level. <laughs> All right, and dad's gonna help as well. We usually put five points of contact into these things and we'll use drywall anchors as well. Make sure that that thing stays in place where it should stay. Okay, brackets mounted and Trevor's just making a two and a half inch hole, which is beautiful as you can see. It's a hole and you can see right through it. <laughs> it's a hole. <laughs> now the unit goes up and I'm on the other side making sure that those lines go right through in that hole. You got it there, Jess? Yeah, it's both are through now. So the placement of this unit isn't ideal, but this is where they insisted we put it and run our line set through that wall there. So Trev's gonna make another hole. 
another two and a half inch hole. Now everything's gonna come together just on this side of the wall. We've got a little drain hose to get through that wall there. It just comes out right there. And this is where we're gonna mount our uh, drain, our condensate pump. So Trevor's just kind of eyeing things out here. It comes with a sweet little bracket. So we're just gonna install that and put the pump on it. Just kidding. That's a terrible joke right now. Amazing. It just hangs out. All right, now that's done. I'm going to get started on the wiring here. Oh, man, this wiring is so tricky. I'm going to let you watch me struggle. I'm keeping it real here for you guys. It's not easy. Just go in there, you stupid thing. Welcome Thank to you. the joys of wiring. Yeah, that's fine. I'm struggling, but I get it. And then I'll feel like a rock star when I've got it. No, you won't. Yeah. You'll, you'll know that there's another one to come. It's fine. <laughs> get in there, you fuck. <laughs> Everything is so sweaty. The answer is yes, I did get the bracket in and look, it's beautiful and it works and I'm pretty chuffed with myself right now, yes. <laughs> they have a scissor lift on site, so we just use that to straighten our line set and add brackets to keep them in place and make it all straight and beautiful. Look how nice. Usually we would actually cover this in a trunking so that you can't see that line set. It's like invisible. But again, they were kind of particular about what they wanted here and they didn't want that. So they didn't get that. Here's the completed line set. And now we've got to do some work on the roof. For each of these copper lines, we measure, cut, ream, and then flare both of them. So they have flare connections onto the unit. And we just recently started using this NEVAC um, automatic flare tool, which is awesome. Just got to remember to put that flare nut on before you start. Choose the size that you're going to use. And then the machine does the rest. It's actually pretty wicked. So now that flare tool goes on. It clamps on and then you press one button. And then a beautiful, perfect flare comes out. Although, Dad was pretty quick to keep going and I didn't really get a chance to inspect my flare, which is kind of funny, but also annoying. <laughs> I want to inspect my handiwork. <laughs> okay. You get to do it all again on the second line. I'm just going to cut it, flare it, do all that fun stuff. This one is a 3-8 line, I believe. We just did the quarter before. And this time, hopefully, I can inspect my beautiful flare. Yes. It's beautiful. And just add a little bit of oil to my flare connection. And then tighten her up. And I have had a torque wrench on my wish list for the longest time. And one day, 
I will get one. So that basically leaves just the control cable and power cable to this unit. But instead of doing that, we're going to get started on the second indoor head so that that can at least be done. So we've prepared our line set like we did before. And now I'm going to head back downstairs through this fun little maze. And we're going to get started on unit number two. Starting with that mounting bracket to make sure we know exactly where that's going to go. We'll take some measurements. This time we're not going to cut a hole through the wall because we're just going to go straight up through the roof jack. So we're just leveling off our mount mounting bracket and mounting the unit, baby. Trev stayed in the change room to keep working on the things down there. And I, we're communicating through the roof jack. I can hear him if I put my ear to the hole. And just because this run is so short and we're going through this hole with some other stuff in there, we decided to actually um, break off the, the package of line set that we made to put them down individually. It just worked out easier that way for us. So we've got both of the line sets down. Now we're gonna throw the drain line down for the condensate pump. And then finally, we're gonna do the control cable. And as I'm sending it down, Trevor's connecting it on the inside. And once he's done his part, we can connect it to the outdoor unit. Look at that beautiful job he's done. Everything is tucked away so nicely. The condensate pump is mounted and connected. The only thing he's left for me here is the control cable, which I will come back and do tomorrow. We plugged in our heated lunch boxes and then went to continue working on the roof. So this is that second unit, just getting all the roof stuff done now, the conduit where our control cable is gonna go through for waterproofing just sort of setting everything up here and tying it all down nice and neatly. Now it's time to get the outdoor unit wired up and I can do both indoor units to this one outdoor unit. So what did I say? This is unit B. There was no real comment about this wiring, but I did get a really great text message while I was busy. It was from my brother downstairs. <laughs> Tara says our uh, lunches are ready. They're hot, hot and ready. But I'm so close to finishing this wiring, I'm going to just do that first before I go downstairs for lunch. Okay. Oh. All right, I'm all done up here. How beautiful is my wiring? Got some nice big loops. And pretty chuffed about that. Pretty chuffed with this whole day. Actually, it's quite late in the day, so it's a late lunch, and then we're going to head out for the day. We would have stayed to finish the job completely, but we needed a couple of more hours and those guys kind of pack up and leave around 2.33 p.m. So we left as well. You see this truck that's pulled up on this on the right hand side? Oh my gosh, so much traffic caused by that truck. Okay, we're back in our blue hairnets and now I just have to finish the wiring on the second indoor unit and then vacuum it and, and start commissioning. I honestly don't know how guys with big man hands do this. It is so tricky. I struggled, but I got the wiring done. <laughs> and then remember that little bracket from the first unit? Oh, really? Yeah. It's so difficult to it's, do that. It's so tough. Let me try two tons and then... I tried more than two times, and here are my hard-working faces. They're pretty hilarious. Come on, baby. 
Baby, get in there. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating. <laughs> wow. I got it done, but I forgot to take a picture. So this is the first unit, all fully completed. Usually we would cover this line set and everything here with trunking. It's like just a nice cover to protect it and to make it look better. But um, they were quite specific about just leaving it as it is here. Now we have the system on vacuum. And then we're going to test the drains and the condensate pumps as well. Just fill it up with water and make sure that it runs. Um. And it does. It's beautiful. Pumps all the way up onto the roof. And we also check the drain on the actual unit itself. So we pour water down onto the coil and make sure that it pumps out. Got a little remote thermostat mounted onto the wall. And now the moment of truth. That's music to our ears. And this is one of my favorite parts. Feeling that cold, cold air on me. It's so awesome. <laughs> I'm just testing the second condensate pump and the second drain outside of the unit. Very good. How beautiful is that mirror finish? Just making sure everything looks good on our condensing unit on the roof. And we're all donezies. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have time for one more adventure? Good, because we're going. And we're going to something somewhere really interesting, a plastic factory that makes different kinds of milk jugs and juice jugs. Look how cool this factory is. I'm going to show you some of their cool stuff. We're sporting white today. Is that is that an upgrade from blue or a downgrade? <laughs> so this is the unit that we're working on today. We are performing a, a back flush on the heat exchanger. So we've got some chemicals to do that and some big wrenches. And basically we just have to remove those two air lines and run water through the system. We started off using one of these little submersible pumps to push water through the inlet and out the outlet, but it actually didn't have enough power to push the water through, so we changed over to a Milwaukee pump a little bit later on. We used this system cleaner from New Calgon to flush through to clean the system. Basically just add it to the water and run it through that heat exchanger and pulling out all of that dirt. It became quite frothy and dirty. And once we were done with that, we rinsed it with clean water and all of that gunky stuff came out into this beautiful, well, that's where we started. And then we had this murky water come out. And then after that, it was clear, clear. Lots and lots of flushing. We managed to get the very last little drops of dirty water out of there. 
and then there was a bit of a cleanup. We're using these dragon towels by New Calgon. They are so absorbent. And then put the system all back together. I wanted to have a turn with the big pipe wrench, but dad had it the whole time. So I didn't get a turn. Now dad's just kind of explaining to us how the system works with the air going in and the air going out through the heat exchanger. And that's where I'm gonna leave this vlog. I'm gonna hold off with the, uh, the salmon hatchery until next week. So you better come back and find out what's going on here. In general, I get to see so many different and cool and interesting places. That's one of my favorite things about being in commercial HVAC is going to all these really interesting job sites and seeing such interesting things. I am celebrating a little bit this week. This week I reached 2,500 subscribers here on my YouTube channel and on Instagram I broke 22,000, which is pretty cool. I just celebrated 20 like a, like a couple weeks ago and I was going to do some fun video or just some fun like photo shoot about it. I got these balloons that say 20K, but I'm already at 22, which is just crazy. Well, you guys, that is all the HVAC adventures I have for you this week. Now I'm trying to decide if I like blue or white better. I think, I think I'm going to go with the blue. It's going to be my new signature look. How about that? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Thanks for joining me on the HVAC Diaries. See you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> That we installed at an oat factory hence an oat 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 factory no they don't make oats they process oats into milk oat milk factory okay okay another super interesting job this week for us was at a salmon factory no <laughs> salmon factory <laughs> okay and this week we spent the time isolating the compressor. I just cannot sleep today. Great. Whatever you do, not screw it up. Fuck oh, It's starting to rain. It's starting to rain. Come on, baby. Get in there. How do you fucking get all the shit in there? Fuck. I redo that ground. I don't like that ground. Alright, so now I gotta get black and black and